Hello, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I am the owner of sciencinghydroponics.com and today we are going to be talking about a very important topic, which is foliar feeding. So what is foliar feeding? So generally in foliar feeding, what we're doing is that we are not applying substances to the roots of the plant, but we are applying them to leaves. So there are mainly three uses for um, foliar feeding. The first use we have is nutrition. The second use we have is to change the behavior of the plant. For example, if we want to, we want the plant to develop more flowers or, or if we want uh, the plant to flower earlier or later, or if we want to increase the amount of leaves the plant produces. So these are changes in behavior that are not necessarily changes in nutrition. And then the last use of foliar feeding is going to be pest control. So generally we will do foliar applications to some sort of pest management. Now, which particular use you're carrying, uh, which you intend will have will make a difference in the foliar feeding that you will be doing. So generally in these three, in these two cases, you are going to want things to go inside, inside leaves. While in this case, you often only want to have an effect outside the leaves. So it is important when you're gonna do a foliar feeding regime to think about which use case you want and how you're gonna um, structure your foliar feeding uh, because of this. So let's talk a little bit about getting inside uh, leaves. So let's talk about the first uh, two cases that I've talked about before. So one of the first things that you need if you're gonna do foliar feeding and you want to get things inside your leaves is you, is that you want to use surfactants. So generally when you have, if you have the leaf, the leaf surface like this and you apply water to it, this thing is gonna be waxy. So the water will form a drop like this and it will not want to spread because leaf surfaces, especially over the leaves, will repel water. So generally what a surfactant will do is that it will reduce the tension between the water and the leaf such a way that it spreads a lot more. In this case, we would only get absorption through this small spot, while in this case we will get better wetting, which will imply much better absorption through the entire um, leaf surface. So surfactants are generally used. Which ones? So we have basically Triton surfactants and we have twins. So these are all uh, non-ionic surfactants. Why non-ionic surfactants? Because non-ionic surfactants are much less phytotoxic. Usually surfactants like dish soap or like regular soap will be very toxic to plants. So no soap, no soaps. Uh, these are generally anionic surf anionic surfactants. Ca cationic surfactants are even more toxic and are therefore seldomly used uh, in this particular case. Now, the second thing that is important in order to get this thing inside leaves and working properly is the concentration of the things that you are going to be using, the concentration of the substances. So foliar feeding is very different compared with mm, root feeding because foliar, foliar feeding, so leaves are not, did not evolve to uptake nutrients through them different than CO2. So leaves are meant to exchange gases and to um, exchange water vapor with the air, mainly to expel water vapor to transpire and to expel oxygen and uptake CO2. So they were not meant to uptake things like calcium or iron or ions in general or other substances. So this means that if we want to force things into leaves, we need a much higher concentration compared with, uh, with root applications.
So we want the concentration to be much higher compared with root applications. How much higher? Well, you will find concentrations like, for example, 600 ppm of calcium to be common, even 2,000 ppm of something like potassium, or even 5,000 ppm of something like iron. So we do this because most of the nutrients will actually never get inside the leaf because the leaves were not designed to uptake these nutrients. We're basically forcing the leaf to get to, we're forcing the leaf to absorb them and therefore we need to put a lot in there so that the leaf can actually get some in there. And you'll find that um, the concentrations you start way, way higher compared with your regular root applications. Now, we also have like the types of ions are also different and than the ones we use in soil and can be um, can be so different than ions that you would use very effectively in foliar feeding are seldomly used in root applications. This is particularly important is that small anions and small cations are much better absorbed. So. What does this mean? Generally, if you're applying a calcium foliar, for example, calcium chloride will be much better than calcium nitrate, and this will be better than something like calcium sulfate, which you cannot use at a very high concentration anyway. So this is because this anion a chloride is much smaller than nitrate, and it is more effectively absorbed as a foliar. Now, if you applied 600 ppm of calcium as, uh, from calcium chloride in your roots, you would kill the plant. So this is to show you how different foliar nutrition can be compared to root nutrition and how you cannot judge whether a foliar will be good depending on whether it would be good for the roots because it is a completely, completely different thing. Now, the fourth thing that we want to do, we want to get things inside the leaves, is we want to use uh, penetrating agents. So we might want to use them. So as I showed this layer, this layer, so the surface of the, of the leaves is a waxy substance that protects the leaf from, mainly it evolved to protect the leaf from fungal diseases and from things that come with rain and with, uh, with any water that might get on top of the leaf surface. Now these penetrating agents are things that will, when you get water on top that contains them, they will partially dissolve this waxy, um, this waxy film to get things into the leaf more easily. These are prim primarily oils, and these can be either like natural oils like jojoba or soybean or things like this, or they can be uh, of a synthetic origin. So they can be derived from oil as well. Different oils can have different effects, but oils can be good penetrating agents. We also have acids can be good penetrating agents. In particular, acids like propionic acid are commonly used as penetrating agents. So penetrating agents dissolve this waxy uh, film and therefore they can make the plants more vulnerable to attacks from other things. So penetrating agents need to be used carefully because they can also affect the plant's ability to defend uh, themselves against diseases. The fifth thing that you want to consider is the pH. So in order to get things into leaves, we want the pH to be between four and six. And this is what gives better absorption. Generally leaves, as I mentioned, are not roots. So the range of pH values tolerated by the leaves is way higher compared with the roots. So while the roots will tolerate something between five, five and six, five, and when you go outside of that, they will have issues. Um, especially plants like tomatoes, of course, if we're talking about things like blueberries, they can go way lower, other plants can go way higher. But if you're talking about like your normal, your most popular uh, flowering plants, then four to six uh, is going to be better for, I mean, we're talking about five, five to six, five in the roots and the foliars are totally different. For the foliars, four to six is what we want. Now, the last thing we want to consider is uh, that the, the stomata. So, you know, these structures that allow the leaves to literally breathe, what allows them to 
intakes CO2 and uh, expel oxygen. So if we are going to effectively get things inside the leaves, the stomata are key because these are literally openings on the leaf surfaces, on the underside of the leaves. So we want these things to be open. And this means that we need to consider the timing of our applications. So in general, like early morning, is the best time to apply because it li like right before sunrise, because it's when the stomata are going to be the most open. This is going to be much better than the next be best thing, which is late afternoon. And this is way, way better than doing it at night, like in the middle of the night. And this is way, way, way better than doing it like in the middle of the day. Like the last time we ever want a foliar spray is in the middle of the day or in the middle of the night, preferably early morning or late afternoon. Which one of those two you pick depends on a couple of things that we will discuss, but a couple of other things that you might to con want to consider is to avoid high heat, so high temperatures, because high temperatures cause the stomata to close as a defensive mechanism to avoid the loss of water. And this is also why we want to avoid uh, low humidity, low relative humidity, which means we basically want to avoid high vapor pressure deficit situations. So we never want to do, if we have a high vapor pressure deficit, then we do not want to foliar feed because this means that the plant is going to be defensively closing stomata to avoid losing water because it is in an environment that is demanding a lot of transpiration. So it will try to defend against losing water by doing these things. So in general, if we have lower temperatures and higher relative humidity, which early morning is a perfect example of that, then we will have a more favorable situation to do that. Now, we might not want to do this in the early morning, depending on the type of foliar that we're doing and why we're doing it. If you do a foliar in the early morning, the water will evaporate pretty fast because the sun is gonna come up or your lights are gonna turn on. And therefore, the time that the, that the water will be in contact with the leaf will be shorter. So if you want to maximize the contact time, then late afternoon is better. But if you are, for example, doing a foliar because you want to treat a fungal pathogen, you want to prevent or attack a fungus, then you want that to stay as little as, you want the water to stay there as little as possible because the water, the high humidity on the leaf surface will help the pathogen. So this is why I'm saying that between early morning and late afternoon, we can make a choice. But if you want to do a foliar for reasons one or two, then early morning is usually the best bet. Although, again, for some things, for example, that uh, take a long time to absorb into leaves, you might want to choose late afternoon so that you uh, get longer periods of time of uh, the water in contact with the leaves. Now, here are some, um, some things about whether, when you want to stay outside of the, of the leaves. So what about when you want to stay outside? So if you want to do a foliar, but you want to prevent absorption, then the first thing is that if you only um, spray the overside of the leaf, then that prevents a lot of absorption because you're not attacking the stomata of the, of the leaf, so that prevents it. You can also avoid, if you, <clears throat> if you use no, no penetrating agents, then that also reduces leaf penetration a lot. And if you also do a pH that is more basic from seven to eight, that also hinders absorption a little bit so that you won't get things inside. This might be the case if you're applying something that you want because it's toxic to a pathogen, so in the case of pest control, but you don't want it to get into leaves because you really don't need it inside the leaves because it is not the function you want and it might be toxic inside the leaves, so you want to leave it outside. So these are ways that we can control whether things stay inside or outside. So finally, I wanna give you some, some like tips uh, for foliar feeding. That <clears throat> first is, well, for cases two, uh, one and two, to prefer early morning. Um, and also to prefer early morning when you have a RH sensitive pests. So when you have pests that are sensitive to water, 
you want the water to be as low as possible. In contrast, when you have pests that prefer dry things, then you might want to do it at night to make sure the environment is more humid. For example, uh, russet mites like dry environments, so doing foliars in late afternoon, uh, so right before either the sun goes down or the lights turn off, then makes the environment humid and then makes it less favorable for the pest. So also, as I mentioned, we want to do late, late afternoon. Afternoon. Uh, for prolonged contact. So when you want the solution to be in contact with the leaves for a longer time, then avoid high VPD. So never do foliars if you have a very high VPD. And the last thing is to make sure you have adequate additives. So the additives are very, very important because the leaves are not built to perform either nutrient absorption or additive absorption. They are not meant to absorb these molecules or these ions through the leaves, so through their tissues. So it is important to do, to do adequate additives, which, which means you need to consider doing surfactants. This is regardless of the type of foliar. Surfactants are usually necessary to get the best results. And then if you want to get things inside leaves, then uh, if you want to really get things inside leaves, then considering penetrating agents is always a good option. Although these need to be considered with a little bit of care, especially if you're doing other foliars, because if you apply a penetrating agent that will make that um, leaf surface weaker, then other foliars you perform later will also benefit from that effect. So that's also something to consider. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this small summary about foliar nutrition and well, the use of foliars for various different things. Please remember to like and subscribe this video. I'll see you on the next one and bye-bye.